All right, so the trickiest part of this section is working with this idea of images and pre-images rather than thinking about them as function values and inverse function values. Because remember, topologically speaking, we're not really um, necessarily dealing with functions of real numbers. So sort of getting past this concept of a function value um, and thinking more of the image or the pre-image um, is going to be helpful. So for um, these definitions, we're going to start with a function f from a to b. And we're going to assume that the set a0 is a subset of a and the set B0 is a subset of B. So we define the image of set A0 under the function F to be F of A0, which we mentioned before, um, but how we define this is the set of elements in B such that um, B is equal to the image of at least one element in A0. And then we define the pre-image of B0 under F. So notice I can talk about image and pre-image um, separately from these ideas of one-to-one -one and onto and bijective and, and inverse. Okay, so uh, very different concept here. So the pre-image of B0 under F, we write it as this sort of inverse notation, but try to separate um, what you think you know about inverses from this notation. So the pre-image of B0 is the set of all elements in the domain, um, basically whose image is in B0. Okay. Now note um, that if there aren't any such elements, um, this pre-image set may be empty. So we're gonna, oops, we're gonna put a little note here um, and say note that the pre-image of B0 may be empty. Okay. All right, so let's take a look um, at some of the results here. So you have problem um, number 1A for homework, um, but I just want to mention it because we'll be able to use this result later. So it turns out that some subset A0 is always going to be a subset of the pre-image of the image of that set. And this will be an equality statement only in the case um, that F is injective. So one to one, right? So that we have to prove for homework. And then we did number one B in class, but I wanna take a look at it again. So here we are showing that the image of the pre-image of B naught 
is a subset of B naught and um, that this is an equality this time um, only if F is surjective. Okay, so this is what we're going to prove. Um, so proof, and we're going to prove that first inclusion case first. So recall that to show that a set is a subset of another set, we want to start by letting an element live in the smaller set. So we're going to start um, with some element y in the image of the preimage of b naught. And then we're trying to show that y is an element of the larger set, because that's what it means um, to be a subset of another set, that everything um, that lives here also lives here. Okay, so if y is an element of the image of the preimage B naught, then, well, what does that mean? That implies that y must be equal to the image of some element in this set. So this is true for some A in the preimage of B naught. Okay, but if A is in the preimage of B naught, um, just by definition of preimages, um, that means that the image of A has to be in B naught, but the image of A is equal to Y, so that means that Y is in B naught. So we've proved that direction. Before, um, before we prove the other direction, um, let's take a look at what happens um, if we have a function that's not surjective, and, and let's see why um, the equality between these two sets is ne not necessarily true. So make a note here, so note that if f is not on to, we can't assume that b naught is a subset of the image of the preimage of b naught. Okay, so let's take a look at a, a counterexample there. And this is the same one that we looked at in class. So we're going to let A be the set of integers 1 through 5. We're going to let B be the set of integers 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then we're going to let B naught, um, the subset of B, uh, B, the numbers 6, 7, 8, and 9. And then we're going to define our function f. Um, so f from A to B. So we're going to let it be defined by the following set of ordered pairs. So 1 maps to 6. 2 maps to 6, 3 maps to 7, 4 maps to 7, and 5 maps to 8. So first, to confirm that this is indeed uh, not an onto function, um, we want to look at f of a, so the image of a. And notice 
if I plug 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 into this function, my output values, that set of um, second coordinates in these ordered pairs, um, is just the set of numbers 6, 7, and 8. Okay, And so because that's not my entire range set B, we know that F is not onto. Okay. All right, so now let's take a look at this image of the pre-image of B naught. So first, what is our pre-image of B naught? Well, since B naught um, is 6, 7, 8, and 9, then what we're going to get here um, is the entire set A. Right, because the numbers 6, 7, and 8 um, from our function definition all are the image of some number 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So this is exactly um, my set A. So I'll just list it out again. But the image of this set is again just going to be the image of A, which we already found to be the set 6, 7, 8. So what we have is that the image of the pre image of B naught is a subset of B naught, right? 6, 7, 8 is a subset of 6, 7, 8, 9. But um, B naught is not a subset of the image of the pre-image of B naught. And it had everything to do uh, with how this function was defined. OK, so this video is getting a little long, but I do want to finish this proof. So let's take a look at how we can prove the equality if we assume that f is surjective. So if we assume f is surjective, we can prove that the image of the pre-image of b naught is not a subset of, but contains B naught. All right, so let's take a look at the proof of this direction. So we called it um, that direction up there. OK, so again, I'm going to start by picking an element, this time in B naught. And we're trying to show that B is an element of f of f inverse of B naught. OK, so since B naught is a subset of B and f is surjective, we know that there has to exist some element in the domain domain A such that f of A is equal to B. So this is where our surjectivity condition comes in. OK, so but if f of A is equal to B, that tells us that, well, since B is in B naught, um, then f of a is in b naught. And if f of a is an element of b naught, that means that a has to be in the pre-image of b naught. Right? That's how we define pre-images. But if a is in the pre-image of b naught, that tells us that the image of A has to be in the image of the pre-image 
of B naught, but the image of A is this little element B, so that tells us that B is in the image of the pre-image of B naught. So therefore, we have shown that B naught is a subset of the image of the pre-image of B naught. And so therefore, these two sets are equal if f is surjective.